All right, guys, so yesterday we talked about the diagnosis and evaluation of wide complex tachycardias, namely ventricular tachycardia versus SVT with aberrancy. And today we're going to be talking about management of ventricular tachycardia because this is going to happen very frequently when you're on the wards or you have cardiology patients. So let's just get right into it. So let's say that you identify a patient is having ventricular tachycardia. Well, the first step that you want to do at this point is define whether this is non-sustained ventricular tachycardia or sustained ventricular tachycardia. If it's less than 30 seconds, then it's non-sustained VTAC, and if it's greater than 30 seconds, then it's sustained. The reason this is so important is because constantly when you are having your patients, you're gonna be getting paged because patients are gonna be having five beat runs of VTAC or 10 beat runs of VTAC. And basically what you need to know is that this is non-sustained VTAC and it's treated much differently than if it's sustained monomorphic VTAC. In these patients, you can then classify them as are they asymptomatic or are they symptomatic? In both cases, I would check electrolytes because a lot of times if the patient's electrolytes are really out of whack, then it's a really good idea to just replace those electrolytes and make sure they're in a good range so that the risk of them having runs of VTAC is significantly diminished. But otherwise, if they're asymptomatic, you really don't have to do anything in this case. If they are symptomatic, then at this point, you would initiate a beta blocker or a calcium channel blocker. If they continue to be refractory, then you may decide to do amiodarone. And then finally, if that continues to be refractory, then you may uh, start pursuing catheter ablation of their uh, VTAC. One side note that I want to mention are a couple things about PVCs and VTAC. So basically, um, anytime you have three or more consecutive PVCs, that is what is called VTAC. Another good number to know is that if anybody is having greater than 10% of their heartbeats are as PVCs, then this greatly increases the chance that they're going to start having some deleterious cardiac remodeling from that, and that may lead you a little bit more towards wanting to do something about it, even if they're asymptomatic. There's also certain rules of malignancy that you should know about, which predicts the chance of a PVC causing a significant run of VTAC, and this is called the rules of malignancy. And kind of the important ones to know here is gonna be frequent PVCs, multi-form PVCs, so they're kind of originating from different foci, and then also what's known as the R on T phenomenon, uh, which is basically when your PVCs are kind of hitting right on the T wave of a normal QRS complex, and that has a specifically high propensity for generating a run of VTAC. All right, so that's basically it for the discussion of non-sustained VTAC. Most of the time when you're gonna get paged by the nurses, there's really not that much for you to do. Check their electrolytes, make sure they're all replaced correctly. If they're asymptomatic, don't really do anything. If they're symptomatic, make sure they're on a beta blocker or calcium channel blocker. Now let's talk about sustained monomorphic VTAC. And here you're also gonna split it up into two kind of categories. So first of all, it's going to be, are they stable or are they unstable? And if they are unstable, then you're basically immediately going to electrically cardioverse them or shock them. If the patient is awake and you can do a synchronized cardioversion, then you can do 100 joules. But honestly, if the patient is significantly unstable or they're, if they're pulseless, then you just want to start directly with a 200 joule shock. And then you can up titrate to like 300 joules and then up to a max of 360 joules. So that's pretty much the easy treatment for unstable sustained monomorphic VTAC. Now, what if the patient is stable, but they're having this continuous sustained VTAC? What's our treatment here? So directly, the answer is going to be, we're going to start with antiarrhythmic therapy. There's multiple options here, but the most common one you're probably going to see is amiodarone. And the way that you do this is a 150 milligram bolus over the first 10 minutes. And then you do a one milligram per minute rate of a drip for the next six hours. Other options include lidocaine, one to 1.5 milligrams per kilogram, or procainamide, 20 to 50 milligrams per minute. So how do you choose these? I would say most people are probably most comfortable with ordering amiodarone, and that's kind of the default choice that most people will have. The things with amiodarone are that it's a little bit slower onset than the other medications, but it does have a higher chance of actually reversing the ventricular tachycardia, and it actually decreases the rate of recurrence of ventricular tachycardia as well. So it's a very solid option. The advantage of lidocaine is that lidocaine uh, generally causes the least amount of hypotension out of all three of these agents and also potentially has a benefit in the setting of MI. The problem with lidocaine is that it only fully reverses the VT about 10 to 20% of the time, so really kind of a low rate of reversing the ventricular tachycardia. And then finally, you have procainamide, which reverses the ventricular tachycardia about 50% of the time, so a pretty good rate there, um, and also has the benefit that even when it doesn't 
reverse the ventricular tachycardia, it actually slows the rate down, which is significantly beneficial as well. So those are some of the three different options and some of the three different reasons that you would choose uh, them amongst each other based on their different side effect profiles and different efficacies. But in general, I'd say you should probably just start with amiodarone as the simplest and easiest and most default one that most people are going to do. One thing to know is that if the VT terminates during the infusion, you can actually stop the antiarrhythmic therapy unless it starts to have a recurrence again in which you should initiate the infusion again. And then finally, if they're refractory and even despite your antiarrhythmic infusion, they're still staying in sustained VTAC, then the next step would actually be to shock as well. And finally, one last thing to note is that there's something called VT storm and there's also something called incessant VT. And so VT storm is if you get somebody out of ventricular tachycardia, but they end up having three or more recurrent episodes within 24 hours, then you call that VT storm. If you also have VT that recurs within five minutes of terminal the VT, that's also called VT storm as well. And finally, in incessant VT is basically when you have VT that lasts for hours, even though the patient's hemodynamically st stable, then you can call that incessant VT. In either of these scenarios, if the patient is on amiodarone or an antiarrhythmic already, then you should also add on a beta blocker, um, sometimes apparently propanolol, because apparently it's been shown to have an increased efficacy of terminating VT, um, but they should be on a beta blocker at this point if they aren't already. So yeah, that's my quick and simple way of deciding how to treat ventricular tachycardia. Number one is really to identify, is this non-sustained ventricular tachycardia or is this sustained ventricular tachycardia? And then from there, you really decide how you're going to treat the patient based on their symptoms or if they're stable or unstable. So I hope that quick video was very useful for you. If you didn't see the first video on evaluating and diagnosing wide complex tach tachycardias, especially uh, regarding differentiating SVT with aberrancy and VT, then click up over here for that video. Thanks again for watching this video. I know it was a simple one, but I think it was also so a useful one that warrants its own short discussion. I'll see you in the next video and peace.